Hi guys, this is Shannon with Shannon McTie Photography. I am excited to edit this image with you with the Tiny Dancer Collection. This image was taken in Colorado about an hour before sunset. The sun at this point had dipped behind the mountains in the back and we were in a nice soft blue hour. I used my Canon, my Canon R6 50 millimeter 1.2 lens. So for this photo right here, I'm going to go ahead and warm it up a little bit. So I'm going to come down here to where it says cooler and warmer and hit warmer. I just want it a little bit warmer. Hit play. Then I'm going to flatten. And then I'm going to brighten it a little since I was a little bit underexposed. Perfect. I like that. And I'm going to flatten that. And now that I got the colors and the light a little bit more accurate, I'm going to come back up here and I'm going to pick one of the foundational prep work, or you can even stack it. It really is just your preference. For me, I'm going to play flamboyant color bright. And I love that. I will bring it down just a little bit. Oh, right there. That's before that's after. And I will flatten it. And then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to go ahead and illuminate my subject. And they were a little bright to begin with, so I don't need it at 100% opacity. I'm going to bring it down to about 50% just to make them stand out more. And then flatten that. And then I'm going to backlit the background. And I'll lower that as well. And I'm not worried about my green starting to turn neon because I'm going to handle that in a little bit. Let's flatten this. Perfect. The next thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and do my dodging and burning. I dodge and burn in a bit of a like painterly style way. So I like to burn the entire image and then dodge by erasing. And where my focus is are my highlights, where I want my viewer's eyes to go, and then just shaping the light. And then I usually dodge and burn between 35 and 45%. I'll get a small brush and we'll start, oops, a little too small. We'll start on the skin. So I'm going to go ahead and take some off her face. If I do the face, I always do the neck. Anywhere I see even the slightest highlights, I'm going to go ahead and try to bring those out more. Creases of the dress. And then the highlights in the basket here, especially on this side, I had a lot. But in the flowers. Perfect. And then I'm going to get a bigger brush. And I'm going to tap right here where the sun is and drag, tap and drag. And by doing this, I'm just kind of bringing out that sunlight that's already there. I'm shaping the light. Now that I have done that, I'm going to go ahead and lower the opacity. You can see all the brushwork in the bottom right corner here. I'm going to grab the opacity, bring it to zero, and slowly bring it up. And this is before, and this is after. I tend to like it. I'm going to pull it down to 60. I tend to like it pretty strong. You just change your opacity depending on your preference. And then I will flatten that. And then the next thing I want to do is I'm going to go to the secondary color bases. Each one does obviously something different, but classic for this image, I think will look really good. It's going to make it stand out a little more, which I like. I'm just going to pull down the opacity of it. I think right there at 45% before, after. It's subtle, but you can really see it on her face before, after. And then flatten. And then the next thing I want to do is I'm going to come down to the minimalistic color pops. I like to stack these. Sometimes I play them by themselves. Sometimes I stack them. Again, just play around with them and find your own vibe with it. But I'm going to play Twilight Matte and hit play. And I am obsessed with this matte that it puts on the photo. It's like this moody, cool matte. I just want to lower the opacity a little bit to about 35% before, after. And then I just have a habit of flattening between each action. 
And then the next one I want to play is, let's see, I want to play Faded Denim. This is going to also give more of a moody, cool color. I just don't need it at 100%. I'm going to play it at like 24, 25%. So that's before, that's after. And then I'll go ahead and flatten that. And then the next one I want to play is called, let's see, A Music Man. This is a really nice one, especially if things are starting to get dark. It's going to bring your colors back out just a little bit. I love that. I'll just lower it to about 70. And then I'm going to go down to the artistic color grading section. And I'm going to pick I'm Still Standing. Hit play. And I really like the colors that this one gives, it kind of starts to put a little more brown tones into the photo. I'm just going to lower it though, because I don't want the skin to be that color. I want to put a little bit of color back in the skin. So I'm just going to pull down the opacity on this to about 45. And then I'll flatten. Let's see. And then I'm going to go to expressive color, and this is going to help you if there's spots that you want to bring some color back and hit play. For me personally, I just want it on the purple flowers. I don't really need it anywhere else. So I'm going to get a small brush and I'm just leaving it 40%, but I'm brushing it over any of those flowers because I don't want to lose the purple colors in them. Perfect. And then I'm going to flatten this. And then the next thing I want to do is come down here and I'm going to play Combo Pop. This one combines your highlight pop and your shadow pop if you want both of them to stand out a little more, which I do in this one. And it helps your image, like if you think it's a little flat, this will make your image not flat. This is before, after. And we'll flatten it. And then we're going to play one that is my absolute favorite. And it's Soft Feather Boa. I love all three of them. Each one is just a little bit different in terms of color and softening. For this one, I'm going to play Satiny Clean. And you can see just right away how creamy and rich it makes everything. I just don't want it on my subjects. I don't want them to be too soft. I'm going to up this to about 75% and just take it off my subjects or anything I don't want too soft. But that's perfect. And then I'm going to flatten my image. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and manipulate the grass a little bit. So each one of these in the English garden section does something different to the grass. Everything from like killing the grass to like making a really rich, deep pine color. So play around with each one because I know everyone has their own preference on what they want to do with the grass. For me, I'm going to play Juniper. And then I'm going to play it at 100% just so you can see it. I'm going to lower the opacity of it. I just know Juniper is going to give more of a moodier look to the grass. And... I personally like my grass a little more green, so I'm going to lower the opacity on this, make it smaller. But not everybody likes that, so again, this is just your preference. And then I'll get in between here too. But it kind of gives you an idea of just what this one can do. Again, I personally don't want it this this dark, but I know quite a few people that actually probably would prefer it like this. I'm just going to lower the opacity of it to about 50%. So that's before, to me, it was too neon. This is now, I like this better. I can see the greens, but it's not in my face neon anymore. And I'm going to flatten that. Perfect. And then the next thing I want to do is I'm going to come down here. And since I'm already up here, I'm going to prohibit the purples in the mountains because our mountains are not purple. And we're at 100%, so that's perfect. And I am a little bit smaller. I'm going to erase the purples off the mountains. Do right here. Perfect. And then I'm going to flatten that. 
And then I'm also going to bounce the blues just a little bit in the mountains. That way I can go get a little bit more of like a dark gray color and that's more realistic to what they look like. I'll just lower the opacity of it a tiny bit, but that looks more realistic to what I saw that night. And then I'll flatten the image. And then let's keep going down. Okay, under the finishing effects, I'm going to give this just a tiny bit more of a filmy vibe. So I'm going to play glittered film grain and hit play. And you can see it gives a grain, it makes it a little bit hazy, which I love, but I don't want it on my subjects that much. So I'm going to get a black brush. 50%. I'm just going to erase it off my subjects. And then I'm going to lower the opacity. That's just a personal preference. I don't like my grain if I use it to be that strong. That's before and that's after. And I'll flatten that. And then the next thing I want to do, we're going to come down here. Let's do focus clear right here. And this is going to make, obviously, your subject become a little more focused. And again, it's subtle, but if you turn it off and on, I know I can see it pretty good on my end. You can really see it in the faces, and it makes them stand out again. I think I will come up here. And flatten. And then let's come down here. Alrighty, and then you could be done if you wanted to, but I really love this tilt shift section. Sometimes I'll play portrait on a landscape, so don't let that stop you from trying it. It actually looks really cool. Just play around with these and see what you like. But I'm going to play the landscape version and hit play. And I just like that kind of tilt shift, creamy look it gives the photo. Again, if it's ever too much, lower the opacity or get a brush and just erase it off a little bit where you don't want it. So I may get like 30%, make it a little bigger and just kind of tap around here. And then I might just lower the opacity down to 60. So then that is before and that is after. I just like a little bit of that tilt shift look. And flatten, we'll play flatten. And then I would call this done. I really, really like this. I'm going to come all the way up so you can see the before and after. So this is before and this is after. Before. After. I hope you guys absolutely love this. If you want any more information on the Tiny Dancer collection, please go to www.greaterthangodspeak.com. Thank you.